consider the differential equation, use the Euler's method with a step length 0.1 to find an approximate value of y when x is 1.5. The formula is given in a data booklet and it looks like y n plus 1 It's the next y coordinate, it's uh, the current y coordinate which is y n plus a step which is h multiplied by the derivative at the current point at x n y n. Notice that we use the next notation n it means uh, the current point n plus 1 is the next point and x n plus 1 it's x n plus a step. Hence x n plus 1 it's x n plus 0 0.1 because a step is 0 0.1 and hence y n plus 1 is y n plus 0 0.1 multiplied by y squared minus 2x squared over x squared at x n y n and we use a calculator and the first step is we choose mode and it must be sequence the next y is n mean is 1 it's always 1 and u it's x v it's y and we use the next notation here n minus 1 it means uh, the current point and uh, n it means the next point and u of n it, it means the next x coordinate it's uh, u of n minus 1 the current x coordinate plus a step which is 0 0.1 and u mean it's uh, 1 it's uh, initial point it's uh, 1 3 here and v of n it means uh, the next y coordinate it's uh, the current y coordinate which is v of n minus 1 plus it's actually this formula plus 0 0.1 v o n minus 1 squared minus 2 multiplied by u o n minus 1 squared divided by u o n minus 1 squared and v mean it's 3 and notice that n is here and u it's the second function and 7 and v it's the second function and 8 and just the, uh, the second function and table and we get uh, results and we need x 1.5 and we can see v it's y so to see significant figures uh, the required value is 10.7 so y is 10.7 <clears throat> the next question use the substitution y is vx to show that by solving uh, the equation shows that y is actually we need to just solve uh, this uh, differential equation and it is given that uh, you should use uh, uh, substitution y is vx but you should know that if dy dx it's a function of y over x and here if we divide each term by x squared we get y over x squared minus 2 and we can see that dy dx depends only on y over x and it's called homogeneous differential equations and it can be solved by substitution y is vx where v is some function of x and we need derivative dy dx it's a product of two functions so we use the product rule so it becomes a derivative of v is dv dx and multiplied by just x so it's x dv dx plus v and the derivative of o x which is 1 so just plus v hence it becomes dv dx x dv dx plus v is y of x it's v so it's v squared minus 2 and move v to the right and get that it is equal to v squared minus v minus 2 as required so 
is given as required. And the next step, we can see that we can separate variables. So we can rewrite as dv over v squared minus v minus 2 is dx over x. And then we integrate both sides. How to integrate the left-hand side? You can see that there is a quadratic function in the denominator. And there are two possibilities. If denominator can be represented as a square plus a number, it's when there are no roots, no roots, so it's square plus a number, hence it's uh, octangent, formula is given in a data booklet, and if there are roots, hence uh, it's uh, square uh, minus a number, and hence it can be represented as 1 over a product of uh, factors, and hence it can be split into uh, two more simpler fractions, and then we can integrate them. We cannot integrate uh, it directly, so we, we split it into more simpler fractions, and it's called uh, by partial fractions. So we need roots. Let's consider v squared minus v minus 2 is equal to 0. And we can apply uh, sum and product rule. Sum is minus b over a, so sum is uh, 1, product is negative 2, and roots are negative 1 and 2. And hence we can rewrite v squared minus v minus 2 as a uh, general formula is a, uh, x minus the uh, first root, uh, x minus the second root, a is 1 here, so it becomes v plus 1 v minus 2 and we can rewrite it and uh, actually uh, we need uh, then split it into more simpler fractions so it becomes 1 over v minus 2 v plus 1 is equal to it's a over v minus 2 plus b over v plus 1 hence we do common denominator again, it's v minus 2, v plus 1, and it's a v plus 1 plus b v minus 2, and the left hand side. Hence, we can conclude that uh, 1 is a v plus 1 plus b v minus 2, and Let's consider v to be equal to negative 1 to get uh, this to be equal to 0. Hence, it becomes 1 is uh, 0 plus b times negative 3. Hence, b is uh, negative 1 third. And uh, let's consider v to be equal to 2 to get uh, this to be equal to 0. And it becomes 1 is a times 3 plus 0, so a is 1 third. Hence, it becomes integral and a, which is 1 third over v minus 2, plus b, which is uh, negative 1 third over v plus 1, dv is integral dx over x. And now it can be integrated, it's a len. We know from a data booklet that integral dx over x is um, a len x. And uh, in general, if it's, uh, there is a function ax plus b, if it looks like dx ax plus b, in general, um, it should be used to substitution u, which is ax plus b and uh, rewrite it in uh, uh, terms of u. But we know that if it's a function of uh, ax plus b, we use the same formula as in data booklet. It's ln ax plus b, and actually it's absolute, absolute value. But 1 over a arises. And here we can see that a is, it looks like, 1 v minus 2 a is 1 so actually nothing arises so finally it becomes one third it's a constant and len 
of the absolute value v minus 2. a is 1, so it's 1 over 1. Uh, plus uh, negative 1 third or minus 1 third and also a ln v plus 1. The absolute value is equal to, we can see that it's ln x, also the absolute value and plus constant. We can rewrite as a single uh, a logarithm. We can fa uh, factor out 3. Oh, actually, it's not necessary. We can do it a bit later. Anyway, uh, we know that v is uh, y over x, so we don't need v, so we can rewrite one third, and actually it's difference of two lengths, so we can rewrite it as ln over the ratio, it's v, and uh, in general it's it's still uh, the absolute value v minus 2 v plus 1 and we know that v is y over x y over x plus 1 and we can multiply each term by x to get y minus 2x y plus x is ln of x plus c and it is given that y is positive and y is greater than 2x. Uh, it means y over x is greater than 2. And we can see that uh, everything is positive. So we can rewrite without uh, bars. So it becomes one third ln of y minus 2x. y plus x is just a ln of x plus a constant. And uh, it is given a point 1, 3. So we can substitute it and find the constant. So it becomes 1 third ln. Uh, so it's uh, 3 minus 2 times 1 over 3 plus 1 is ln 1 plus the constant is 0. And it's one third ln one fourth, which is a constant. And it can be rewritten, it's not necessary, but one fourth is four to negative one, and it's negative one third ln of four. Hence, finally, it becomes one third ln y minus 2x over y plus x is ln x minus 1 third ln of 4. And we can see that we can multiply each term by 3 and move the 3 to the power. Hence it becomes ln x cubed. And on the right hand side we can rewrite as a single ln of x cubed over 4 ln of this y minus 2x y plus x and hence we can conclude that uh, this is equal to this so it becomes y minus 2x y plus x is x cubed over 4 cross multiplication and and it becomes for y minus 8x is x cubed y plus x to the power of 4 so to the left and becomes y 4 minus x cubed is 8x plus x to the power of 4 and y is 8x plus x to the power of 4 4 minus x cubed the answer is given 4 minus x cubed yes it's correct it's correct find uh, the actual value of y when x is 1.5 so we just substitute 1.5 uh, for x and get that y at 1.5 is equal to 27.3 so we can see that uh, uh, the actual value is 27.3 and uh, and the approximate value is 10.7. So we can see very large difference.
and uh, actually the next question is uh, why uh, is there uh, this uh, difference so using the graph of uh, y suggest a, re a re reason reason why uh, the approximation given by Euler's method in A is not a good estimate for the actual value of y at 1.5. So you can plot this uh, graph of this function. So it's uh, mode and again function y. It's uh, this function graph and we can see that it changes and actually increases very rapidly and why and we can see that there is denominator and it has a vertical asymptote at x cubed is 4 and x is a cubed root of 4 and it's approximately 1.59 and 1.5 is uh, close to uh, this value uh, so function uh, changes uh, very rapidly but question is uh, why does it influence on uh, uh, the approximation and uh, let's consider how um, the earlier method works it's a function which is increasing and let's consider Point, point A with coordinates x1 and y1 and point B with coordinates x2, y2 and it's a step over 0 0.1 it's delta y so y2 its uh, approximate value is equal to y1 plus delta y. So it's actually y coordinate of c. It's approximate value. And you can see that uh, the actual value is uh, y coordinate o OB. And uh, when function increases very rapidly this difference also increases very ra rapidly so uh, the difference uh, will be very large hence and actually delta uh, delta y it's uh, uh, our 0 point y you multiply by dy dx which is uh, uh, the gradient uh, of the tangent or gradient of the curve at point x1 y1 so uh, the answer is the next we can say that uh, why the approximation it's because there is a vertical asymptote at axis root 3 or uh, root 3 or 4 it's actually enough or uh, we can say that uh, uh, function is uh, increasing is increasing very rapidly when uh, uh, during the interval considered and uh, uh, hence gradient changes rapidly it means gradient at a and uh, then gradient uh, at the next point at b and then at the next point so gradient changes rapidly uh, it means also that uh, gradient uh, of the curve changer, uh, changes rapidly because function is uh, uh, changes rapidly so uh, possible answers are uh, just say that uh, there is vertical asymptote at uh, this point root, uh, root uh, of degree of 3 of 4 or say that uh, gradient changes rapidly during uh, the, the interval considered or um, it's because uh, the function uh, changes rapidly during the interval considered and that's all for this question